What's up guys? Welcome again to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Naninga Koei. And uh, I wanted to say make sure to subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, today I'm going to help somebody because I remember I was in the same dilemma and I scored the internet for this issue, which is actually comparing the Ghania. What is it called? The Ghania. So I had to write it down because I don't actually have the actual product because I finished it. The Ghania Pure Active 3-in-1 Wash Scrub and Mask. So it's the Ghania Pure Active 3-in-1. So it is a wash, a scrub, and a mask. And the Nivea Perfect and Radiant. This video is not sponsored at all. I just thought I would help somebody because I was in the same dilemma. This is the one I'm currently using and it's almost over. I wish you could feel it. It's actually almost over. So I think I'm in a good position to actually tell you exactly what you're going to get when you buy these things so the nivea perfect and radiant three in one wash scrub and mask so it's similar to the gania three in one because it serves as a wash a scrub and a mask yes and i felt that somebody and this nivea is actually for oil normal to oily skin now i wish that somebody had actually helped me select one of these products I would not be in the dilemma that I actually am in. But I've used these two products, the Garnier 3-in-1, and I've also used the Nivea 3-in-1. And these are common products that Kenyans use. Like, they are common, like they're in supermarkets, they're in beauty shops, they're in chemists. They're the most common scrubs because everybody wants a deal. Everybody doesn't want, like, three things, like a wash, a scrub, and a mask. We want, like, separate uh, no, I mean, what am I saying? I think I'm kind of confused. We want one product that can serve as a wash, a scrub, and a mask. I remember when Ghania launched, because Ghania launched their three-in-one before Nivea. Yeah. And I remember I was so excited for that three-in-one. That was around 2013, I believe. I haven't researched on when actually Ghania launched it, but I have used that product, and I know exactly what you're going to get. So... Let's just get into the video because I've rambled on. And first of all, for the Garnier, for the presentation, I'd say they are even, like, seriously. They are even, they, they are both tubes. They both look like this. And, uh, yeah, they just have their logos and exactly what they are going to do written at the back. For example, this Nivea says, this is the Nivea Perfect and Radiant 3-in-1 Cleanser. And it says it effectively removes impurities, fine beads to exfoliate, helps to remove and prevent shine for hours and to mattify the skin, does not dry out the skin so both of them have instructions at the back they are a tube a plastic tube with such a flip opening both of them are exactly like this now when it comes to um the presentation i, I think that is just enough and if you see me looking down i've actually written down exactly what was going on because i didn't want to confuse in now out of the packaging we are going to talk about the consistency now immediately you open like what kind of consistency is inside this Personally, I'm not going to dwell on exactly which one I prefer, but I'm just going to give you my actual what I saw, what I felt, and how, you know, I felt about it. So when you open the this and pour the product out, I'd say that the Garnier one is more of a clay mask with beads in it or more of a clay mask with, like, a scrub in it. While this Nivea one feels like a lotion with a scrub in it. I don't know if you can understand, but that's just how it feels. It feels a bit greasy. Yeah, like um, as if it has like some, you know, lotion with lotiony products with uh, the clay with the beads in it. While the Garnier one feels like a clay mask, you know, like I'd say that the Garnier one feels clayish with a scrub or beads or an exfoliant. And this one feels like a lotion with less beads and an exfoliant, basically with an exfoliant. But in my preference, I preferred that feeling of the Nivea to the Garnier one because of the next reason that I'm going to tell you when you apply, like exactly, is it a smooth application? The Garnier one, honestly, the application can be kind of rough. Like, um, how, how can I put it? You can picture the way then... An, late 90s early 2000s clay masks used to be like you know like hard to apply slightly just slightly while this Nivea one actually 
was very easy to apply. Like you can just smooth it on hurriedly and you're good to go. While as the Garnier one, especially I feel that if you're going to use a brush, the Garnier one is going to be a bit more tougher to apply if you're going to use it as a mask that is. And also either way as a wash or whatever, the Garnier one is a bit clayish. If you can get the, that on the application, the application is smoother for the Nivea. It's easier to use, less water to apply it on your face. And like the Garnier requires quite a bit of water to apply it on your face. Okay, the next one is easier to apply. I have to say that you have to use more products. Like you have to apply a lot of product in order for you to feel um, like, um, you know, you've put enough grit or whatever is inside here. But when it comes to the Garnier one, you do use less product because it's like it's thick. If you get what I mean by it being thick. Yes, the Garnier one appears to be thicker, yeah, in consistencies than this one. This one feels more watery. That's why I gave it the comparison of a lotion. Yes, it doesn't actually feel like a lotion. Don't quote me on that, but it is less thick than the Garnier one. The Garnier one is really thick. Thick, no, thick. And if you really want to know, like, what I mean by thick, like, it's the kind of product that when you actually leave the tube open, it's going to dry out. That's how the Garnier one. What the results? What about the results? Now, both of these products actually promise that they're going to lessen your blemishes. They're going to make your skin smoother. They're going to make your skin more radiant. And they're going to prevent shine and mattify your skin. Well, what I can tell you is that when it comes to mattification, the Garnier one did perform better in mattifying your skin. As I said, it does have that consistency of like a clay mask, like a legit clay mask. But this one has like less of a clayish feeling. So the Garnier one definitely when it comes to mattifying will got the thumbs up, like it mattifies more. And then when it comes to blemishes, honestly, both of them did not do much for blemishes. When it comes to controlling acne breakouts, I personally normally get acne breakouts. If you follow me on this channel, you know that sometimes I get horrible, horrible skin. Occasionally it's smooth, but rarely. And what I can say is that the Garnier one did control breakouts when I was using it. The Nivea one, not so much. Not so much. And that is just my skin. Don't quote me on this because I'm not a dermatologist and I don't actually know the effects of some of these products in these things. And because I don't have both products to compare, I have used both of them. In fact, I've used the Garnier one for a really, really long time. But immediately I switched to the Nivea one, I actually got breakouts. Yes. And I thought it was just the masks that we are wearing. But I actually stopped at some point to use it and I realized my face started clearing and immediately I got on back to use this Nivea one. I actually got breakouts. So when it comes to acne breakouts for my skin, the Garnier one actually controlled my acne, but the Nivea one, not so much. Yeah, that is for my skin, not anybody else's skin. I don't know, but that's just for you to compare and maybe assess and all controlling acne breakouts. We've talked about uh, reduction of blemishes. We've talked about mattifying. What about smoothening? What I can say is that immediately you use the product, for example, as a, a scrub or something of the sort, they do definitely smoothen your face temporarily. Yes. And for the Nivea, it did smoothen, but in the long term, it actually gave, like, the next day I'd wake up with acne breakouts. Like, it was basically irritating my skin, despite the fact that it is milder. As I said, it's, it doesn't have, like, that kaolin and okay it does have kaolin what am i saying it does have kaolin but it doesn't have that clay feel and that like condensed feeling that ganya had it appears to be milder because it was uh more runny compared to the none of these things are runny but compared to the ganya one it was more runny so yeah the nivea one did not control any acne but it is easier to apply yeah then next i have to give you a little 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 thing that i noted about those like what wet wipes or makeup wipes or coconut oil to remove your makeup before you use your cleanser and you know i'm sure everybody is guilty of this of just taking their wash or whatever and going harm onto your skin with a makeup on i'm guilty of that and i've done that severally 
what I noticed about the Garnier one, if you have a full face of makeup like this face, and you use the Garnier um three in one, the Garnier will definitely do a good job of removing that makeup. I was horrified. I was horrified when I tried to use the Nivea one. And uh, yeah, my makeup did not come off so well. Thirdly, if you know you use hard water, I know there are people out here who do use hard water. Like me, my water comes from a well. Like I pump water from a well. If you do use hard water, I'd say the Nivea is a no. No, 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 no. Because it's not going to work well. Yeah. It's going to make your skin um, like form some scum. Like um, when you're through with washing, you feel like your skin feels rubbery. But that didn't happen with the Ganya one. So I'm assuming that the Ganya one is hard water friendly. But in case you have normal soft water, like normal people, well, yeah, I guess any of them can do. But that was just extra tips for you. That is what I can say. And that is just my personal opinion, my comparison, nobody else's comparison. So uh, take it with a grain of salt and uh, a pinch of salt. Basically, just take it with a pinch, a tiny, tiny pinch of salt. And definitely uh, consult dermatologists or skincare experts when you're not sure about products. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching this comparison. Don't forget to subscribe. It's only a button. It is only a button. Yeah, hit the red button down below and uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Ciao!